So can we figure out when Bitcoin is going to retest all time highs and whether we can pick the months that Bitcoin is going to top in the next cycle just by using historical data and past cycles? Um, I don't know, but let's let's have a look and see if we can figure it out together. So this is going to be a quick video. It's going to be quite self-explanatory, but um, we'll get into it. So uh, this is the first cycle, 2013 to 2015. Cycle top here. This is the cycle top close. This line signifies the monthly close. Uh, candle clock close. This is just where it wicked out. So from the top of the first cycle to the bottom of the bear market, it took 59 weeks right so that whole process took 59 weeks to play out um then we had the low down here at 154 then we had the candle close pushed it up to 213. so then we had this period where we went off the low built a base here we moved back up to all-time highs so that was the first cycle we had the bull cycle the bear cycle then the next one started okay right let's move up so this is the second cycle okay started here and then we had the cycle pushed up to the cycle top high. Uh, let's go a little bit over. So we had the cycle top high. Um, then from to play from the bottom of the cycle low in 2015 to the cycle high in 2017 at 20K, that whole period took 152 weeks. So that whole period took roughly three years for it to play out, to go from the low of the last cycle to the top of the next cycle. That was a three year period. So we've had, we had this lovely, lovely upside action over three years. Then it topped out. Then we had the cycle close at 14K on the monthly candle. Then we had the bear market, which pushed all the way down uh, to December 2018 and went down to 3K. Now that whole period took 52 weeks. So again, very similar to the first cycle, it took around a year to play out. Um, 59 weeks, 52 weeks, not much difference there. Then we had a push up, we had the, the candle close on the monthly, had a revisit of the um, 14K, the candle close. Uh, then we had the COVID kind of anomaly, like let's just, let's just not even include that, that's bullshit. So then we moved on to the next cycle. So from the cycle low of that bear cycle to the top, of the next bull cycle, which was 69K, which is the cycle we're kind of in now, or the last cycle, depending on how you want to see it. Um, that whole period, again, took 152 weeks. So the first cycle, from the cycle low to the cycle top, 152 weeks. From the cycle low of that cycle to the, to, to the top, again, took 152 weeks. So you're starting to see kind of, um, some repetition there right so you're starting to see the fact that from the bear markets took a year to play out we took 52 59 weeks 52 weeks that whole from the top to the bottom one year essentially then to go from the cycle low to the top of the next cycle it took 152 weeks both times exactly so that was essentially three years so one year down three years up that's those first two cycles. That's what we what we see there, really. Then we go on to the next cycle, which is the one we're kind of in now. From the top of the cycle at 69K um, to the low that we had in November 2022, which was 15K, roughly 15 and a half, I think. Again, that period took 52 weeks. So you're seeing a bit of a pattern here where... We had 59 weeks for that bear market to play out, 52 weeks for this one, 52 weeks for the current one to play out as well. So if you're just looking at historical data, right, and you're not looking at, you know, you're not co concentrating on macro, which is what we're going to ignore all of that right now in this video. We're just looking at the cycles and seeing if shit lines up. OK, that's all we're doing here. And you can see it kind of is right. That's one year, one year, one year of bear in all three scenarios. So if 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 you're looking at just the data, it would signify that that low that we put in 
in November 2022 is actually the low of this bear cycle. Um, doesn't mean we won't have more downside action, you know, like uh, technically you would expect price to kind of revisit at least these candle closes here at 23 and a half or even the cycle top again, but we already kind of had that retest here. So from a technical point of view, you would expect a bit of a pullback here, but this might be the low. We might have already put that low in. And I drew a lot of this stuff when we was at 30K, roughly about 30K. And I decided that I needed to look forward and try and decide, um, you know, what should I be looking at essentially? Uh, and I kind of forgot the chart for a long time and I kind of revisited it recently, which is why I'm making this video. So I drew it round about up here and I had the green line on, I had this green line on for the kind of close and the, the cycle top. And then I just had this little box drawn and I lined it up with uh, the 52 weeks of the past cycle. I actually had this at 55, so it was a little bit longer, um, but we've kind of hit it perfectly. Um, and this was the zone that I was very much paying attention to under, under the previous cycle high, which has never happened before. We'd never gone below the previous cycle high uh, on, on the market. So that was something that I was very much going to be looking, looking, uh, paying attention to. So once we got below it, that was an area between the candle close and the, and the cycle top. I thought we'd get down to 14 K at least we'd get a test. Um, it didn't happen. I was wrong. Uh, but we did get down to 15 and a half. I did scoop up some below 20 K. Uh, didn't get the exact bottom like everyone else on crypto Twitter did apparently. Um, so can we look forward now? We, we've seen what the past cycles did. One year down, three years up. Can we now apply that going forward if we're just looking at the historical data uh, and figure out, you know, when we're going to get a return to all-time highs and, and can we even pick the month that the market is likely to top? So let's go back to that first cycle, right? And let's get the date range out. So from the cycle low here to a return to all-time highs, which was this one here, you can't really count this one. That was the candle close. Let's go to the actual top of the market, which was here. That whole period took 25 months. So that's a two year period where uh, we went from the lows and revisited the all time high of the previous cycle. 25 months, two years. Now let's move on to the next one. As my, you might have heard my belly rumble there, so I need to eat something. So from the cycle low to the top, that took 23 months. So Again, you're seeing a very similar uh, repetition here where from the cycle low to the high, 25 months, 23 months, again, two years. It took two years to return to all-time highs. So you might have already seen the lines that I've put on there. To go to all-time highs, let's go in between 23 and 25. 24 months, that would signify that or signal, sorry, that in November 2024, based on historical charting of Bitcoin and historical data, that November 2024 is when we're likely to see a retest of the all-time highs uh, of the previous cycle. So 69K um, to go from 26K, we already saw a push up to 30K. Um, but yeah, November 2024, uh, which is what, I don't know, math, <laughs> 12, I don't know, like, like 16 months away, 70 months, I don't know. Um, so that that there, if we're just looking at the, the previous cycles, is what we should be expecting to see a revisit of all-time highs. Um, now, we could go into macro, we could go into, um, you, know, you know, is there going to be a recession? Um, uh, when are the interest rates going to hit? We could talk about all of that stuff and whether it will have an impact on Bitcoin cycle and whether Bitcoin's only ever been in a, uh, you know, in low interest to interest rate environment and not in a recession. How's it going to perform in a recession? Um, we don't really know. We're finding out for the first time now, but it's not doing too bad, is it? 
So we're going to ignore all of that today and we're just going to look at historical data and, and base it on that, right? So then let's look at the cycle low and let's go uh, 152 weeks. So let's, let's, let's do it actually on the chart. I know we've got the 152 weeks up there, but let's, let's do it properly so we can, you know, put a nice bow on all of this. Um, the cycle low of the first cycle to the 2017 cycle, that was 35 months for that to play out. So, which is again, three years, 152 weeks. Then we've got uh, the same thing here. 35 months, again, 152 weeks. So we can pretty much do that exact because it's basing it on historical cycles. Um, 35 months, now let's go one over and let's push that out one, bam. Is that right? Have I got that correct? Yes, I do. So 35 months, 152 weeks. If we're saying that from the bottom of the low, to the top of the next cycle takes three years for that to play out essentially. Then if we can push that forward in time and predict the future, which we absolutely can, this is 100% accurate and you should follow this to the, no, I'm joking. So what we're looking at here is 35 months, 152 weeks. That would signal that October, 2025, or in that window essentially, because it's never gonna be perfect, but if you're just going charting it on, on the historical price action, then we would be looking at a top a revisit of the all-time highs in November 2024. And we'll be looking at uh, a next, uh, you know, top cycle top uh, around October 2025. So, I mean, the, the easier way of looking at that is if you're looking at basing it on the historical charting, the end of 2024 is a revisit to all-time highs and um, the next cycle top would be at the end of 2025. Around, there around about, right? Um, now, of course, this isn't going to be perfect. Uh, and of course, none of this could fucking happen. This could all be bullshit and the cycles could not repeat. And, uh, you know, this is all just a nice silly coincidence that things are lining up again. Um, but... No, that that's essentially a little thing that I have been paying attention to, and I think you should pay attention to it. Um, I also think you should pay attention to macro and stuff like that. But um, there you go. That's a little revisit through history, and can we apply that to the now? Um, take away from that what you will. And uh, I'm going to go and probably eat something because my stomach's a little bit empty right now. So I hope everyone has a good day. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, do all the YouTube stuff where you like the comments and the subscribes and the follows and the Snapchats. I don't know. Have a good day. I love you all. Bye-bye.